Praise the Lord to you, the most precious saints of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're grateful the Lord has been gracious to bless us to be able to gather once again in this format for another Bible class setting. It is our prayer and our desire that the Lord is blessing your life, amen, keeping you through this very uh, turbulent time of COVID-19. It's an expectation that certainly God that we serve, amen, will deliver us, amen, even from the very presence and effects of this ongoing virus. But today we're thankful in spite of all things that we'll be facing of this opportunity to be able to examine the scriptures of the word of God, that God may bless us, enlighten us, and give us, amen, the strength that we so seek through the word of God. Today we're going to be, amen, talking on the subject matter, balance sin with conviction and commitment. Balance sin with conviction and commitment. Amen. We want to look at, amen, how we can utilize Amen. The tools of conviction and commitment, amen, to overcome, amen, the sin nature that we face, amen, in our lives as being Christians that are striving for righteousness. And I believe <clears throat> the two elements that the Lord have blessed us to be able to use as we'll discuss further in this lesson is the tool of conviction as well as the tool of commitment. Sin is the act of just simply doing, thinking, or participating in anything that God considers to be a transgression of his established word. Psalms 51 and 5 tell us that at conception, sin was present and became part of our everyday lives. This being the case, the successful Christian must learn how to successfully overcome the attacks of the sin nature. In today's lesson, we will discuss two elements that will help us succeed in our efforts to overcome the desires of the sin nature. We will discuss how conviction and commitment can be valuable tools that lead to Christian success. Amen. As I stated earlier, I believe these two elements, amen, conviction and commitment, amen, are tools that we can properly use, that we can fight, amen, the good fight of faith, we can finish with laying hold of eternal life as God has, amen, destined us to be able to do so. Let's look at this uh, first element that will help us, amen, battle the sin nature, which is conviction. Amen. A definition for the word conviction simply means the act of compelling one to acknowledge his error or the truth what is alleged. Again, a definition for the word conviction is simply the act of compelling one to acknowledge his error or the truth of what is alleged. Now, conv conviction, when you speak of it in the terms of which we're going to utilize today, amen, it is a powerful force. And by the term a powerful force, that means that it has the ability, amen, to help us to arrive to a certain place or even, amen, to bring us to that place, amen, by means, amen, of dealing with our mind, of dealing with our, our conscious. And amen, that comes about, amen, by the term, amen, that we're using here on the conviction. Amen. Conviction leads a person to the place of dealing with their issues attached to the sin nature. Amen. You don't ever want to be outside of conviction. Amen. Many times, amen, I've heard Christians say, well, that don't bother me. When you deal with certain things and, amen, they're confronted with certain sins, they'll make a, a statement on their behalf that it does not bother them. It's always a dangerous place, amen, to be in such a zone or comfort that I'm in the state of sin and that sin does not bother me. Amen. So ask God as part of your, amen, walk, part of your life with him upon the face of the earth that God will, amen, allow you to operate on a spirit of conviction. We'll talk a little bit more in depth about, amen, the outline of that type of conviction that I believe God will have us to be motivated by. So again, conviction leads a person to the place of dealing with their issues attached to the sin nature. Conviction leads the individual to view the situation in a different perspective. When a conviction comes into play, Amen. It does not matter how we were looking at it or what we thought about it, even at points of what we may have been taught about what we're dealing with. When conviction actually, amen, takes place, amen, it brings the person to a different perspective. And this perspective we are talking about is not, amen, the mass perspective per se or what the crowd decided it should be. But this perspective that we are talking about, amen, is the perspective that comes from the righteousness of God's word. You want to always be in a place that you can be guided, motivated, amen, by the word of God. 
Amen. I don't want to just, amen, know what the words say. I don't want to just be able to read the word of God. But I want the word of God at all times, amen, to have a positive effect on my life. From there, the person is led to change the actions of their way for the better. Amen. Whenever you begin to look at, amen, what you're dealing with, amen, on the conviction in a different perspective, from there, that individual, amen, is led to change the actions of their ways for the better. Amen. You always want conviction to bring you to a place that you realize that, amen, I need to do better. In other words, amen, you may not, amen, find anything within yourself, amen, what may be wrong with the process of what you're dealing in. But when true godly conviction shows up, amen, it begins to shine forth a different light. Amen. True godly conviction begins to take you to a place, amen, of unease, a place of unrest. And you don't want to ever get to the place, amen, where sin does not bother you. Amen. The Christian has moved to a very dangerous place in his life. Amen. When the Christian can commit sin and that sin does not bother them. Amen. I'm, I'm not talking about now how much you enjoyed it or why you may have done it. But you at least want the end result. Amen. Of any sin that I may commit willfully or unwillfully. Amen. That that end result will bring me to a place of conviction. In other words, I would not have a satisfaction. Now, in not having a satisfaction of sin also means that I cannot hold to an excuse for sin. We live in a world today, amen, that basically we are motivated by circumstances. By that I mean this. Many times we would do things, act out things, participate in things, amen, by, amen, the world that we live in. Now, I say world we live in, amen. What is the present happening, amen? Sometimes we're motivated by what other people say, what other people are doing. You would be, amen, I think totally surprised, amen, to find out how many people will commit things that are wrong, amen, simply because of the company that they keep, amen. So even if you fall to those levels of doing things that are not godly, things that are not acceptable in the eyesight of God, you want to always be in a position where conviction can take place. Conviction can serve as your savior. By that I mean this. Amen. I cannot rest, amen, under the spirit of conviction until I get this thing right with God. Amen. So I, I want you to see again, amen, that, that uh, whenever, amen, God give us a different perspective through conviction, godly conviction, amen, that person is to be led to a change, amen, that will bring about a difference in their actions. And those actions, of course, amen, will be for the better. True conviction should always be based upon the truth of the word of God. Amen. True conviction should always be based upon the truth of the word of God. Now, this is why sometimes, amen, the Christian find himself in a place that they're not experiencing conviction is because their convictions are not based upon the word of God. Sometimes they will use convictions, amen, in light of, amen, what other people may think about the situation. Amen. Sometimes they were a base conviction upon, amen, the inside of their own eyes, how they see things, amen, how they feel about it. Amen. But that's not the type of conviction that you want to be motivated by. As a Christian, we want to always be motivated, amen, up under the law of conviction based upon the truth of the word of God. Amen. Christians should not be satisfied at any time, amen, outside of the boundaries of holiness. Amen. Anytime we're outside the will of God, amen, anytime we're outside, amen, of that which is right, amen, that which is moral, that which is honest, amen, that which is decent, amen, that which falls up under the banner of holiness, amen, we are, as Christians, should never be satisfied in that state. Let's look at Psalms uh, 32, uh, verses 3 through 5, uh, give us a little bit of insight of how we are to, amen, be motivated, amen, by Amen. The law in the spirit of conviction. Uh, David give us a good example beginning in verse number three of Psalm 32. He said, when I kept silence, my bones wax old through my roaring all the day long. Verse four. For day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture's turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. David could not rest, amen, because the spirit of conviction was upon him. 
Amen. Everything that he had in familiarity about his relationship with God was troubled. And, and, and that's a safety zone. Amen. You, you don't want to be outside of the will of God and not be troubled. Amen. Many times I've heard the Christians say, amen, well, that don't bother me. You, you, you bring to their light a sin or an act that's not in the will of God and their confession is, well, that don't bother me. Uh, that, that's no bragging point. That, that, that's not a place that you actually want to dwell in as a Christian. Amen. Again, it does not matter. Amen. Why you did the sin, it does not matter. Amen. Even if you say the sin felt good to you or you found pleasure in the sin. Amen. You don't ever want to be to a place. Amen. That the spirit of conviction cannot intervene. When I say intervene, conviction will not make you do anything, but conviction will change your mindset. Amen. About the sin or the act that has been committed. So here in Psalms 32, 3 through 5, amen. David said when he kept silence, amen, his bones waxed old through my ruin all the day long. His very life was affected. Amen. Uh, 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 sin became a weight. Amen. Sin became a burden. Amen. So this conviction that was resting on him, amen, brought him to a place that he realized that he needed to deal with the wrong that was done. He said, for day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. Amen, under the spirit of conviction, amen, he could not find no rest, amen. Everything he did in life thereafter, day and night, amen, was affected, amen, by the spirit of conviction. And it drove him to a certain place in verse number five, as we read, amen, conviction drove David to a certain place. He said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. Amen. Conviction caused him, amen, to readily deal with his sin. And I, I would say to all, as the Bible say, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that being the case with each of us as Christians, want to make sure that there is a process in place that when I sin, when I do something wrong, when I get out of the will of God, that there will be something in place. And, and the two we're talking about in place today, amen, is conviction. That conviction will actually take place. Amen. I, I will not find ease. I will not find normality. Amen. Based on the relationship I once had with God in peace. Amen. I don't want to be at peace. Amen. In a state of sin. Amen. Because if you find yourself at peace in a state of sin, something worse has happened to you. And that worse means that now, amen, as the scripture outlined, you can become blind. You can become spiritually blind. Amen. You can become spiritually numb, amen, to the acts of the sin nature. And even though I'm blind, even though I'm numb to it, it does not mean, amen, that God is going to omit my sin and just let me by. Amen. I want my sin, amen, as David said, uh, to, to forever be before me in so many words till I deal with it. I don't want my sins pushed in a back room. I don't want my sins covered up. The Bible says, if you cover your sins, you shall not prosper. Amen. I want my sins. Amen. Uh, uh, out in the open. Amen. Every time I look, I look right. I look left. There it is. Amen. I got to deal with it. Amen. And, and this is what conviction is all about. Amen. It's a tool that uh, inner tool that God, amen, will allow to work a perfect work in our life. Amen. To help to bring us to a right standing with God. Whenever the Christian experiences conviction, the next step should be obedience to God's word. Amen. So, so, so the question again may be asked, what, what did I do? Amen. Once I become convicted, you now obey. Amen. It, it's not much value to go through a moment of conviction and then slide out from under, amen, the end work of that conviction. The end work of that conviction is that we will fall into a state of obedience. Amen. So whenever the Christian spirits conviction, the next step should be obedience to God's word. Amen. God has dealt with me. Amen. God has shined the light on the error of my way. Amen. God has shown me. Amen. That he is not pleased in what I'm doing and where I am. Amen. So now, amen, the next thing that I must do, amen, I must look towards the word of God that deals with the situation that I'm facing. Let me say this to every Christian, amen, to every baptized believer, whether you know where it is in the Bible or not. Amen. There is word for every situation that we'll ever deal with in life. Amen. God will not leave you here in this walk of life. Amen. Under the sentence of judgment, eternal judgment, and not give us, amen, direction and answer through the word of God. 
Now, now God does not mention, amen, all of the sinful acts that we commit, amen. So he talks about, amen, the desires of the flesh, amen, things that the flesh desire, amen. And God will use certain terminologies, amen, to cover, amen, every area of our life, amen. There's nothing in the Bible about smoking cigarettes, amen, but the Bible talks about the filth of the flesh, amen. So I want you to rest assured, Amen. That the word of God, amen, is our answer and our solution, amen, to help us to fall into obedience, amen, once conviction has taken place. Psalms 119, 105 states, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, amen. You cannot see your pathway clearly unless, amen, you have something, amen, showing you the direction. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light, a light unto my path. Amen. You don't have to fumble through life. Amen. As though you're groping through darkness. Amen. Hoping you're right with God. Amen. No Christian shall walk around. Amen. Hoping that you are right with God. Amen. No Christian shall walk around. Amen. Not knowing, according to the word, where they actually stand with God. Amen. The word of God. Amen. As it says here in Psalms 119, 105, the word is a lamp to our feet. Amen. So you can you can you can actually, amen, take your journey. Amen. Go forth in the Lord. Amen. And be guided by the word of God. And then it's a light to, to your path. Amen. You're going to run into some things. Amen. Where you run into some darkness of life, some things that are not clear, some things that you don't understand. But here again, here comes the word. Amen. It's a light. Amen. Into your path. Amen. You don't have to stumble in darkness. Amen. Again, you don't have to grope around. Amen. Trying to feel your way as you go. Amen. So I want you to see, amen, this, this uh, tool of conviction, amen, is a, is a good method, a good tool that God has given us. Amen. That if we allow it to have its perfect work, amen, we can stay under the will and confinement, amen, of God's holy word. There will be times when the Christian is wrestling with the works of conviction. Amen. There'll be times, amen, when you're wrestling whether it's right. You'll be wrestling with whether it's wrong. During this process, godly convictions will always challenge the status quo. Amen. Sometimes we get so molded, amen, into a particular of life, amen, that it becomes status quo. And it does not matter, amen, what other knowledge we have attained through the word of God. Amen. Sometimes we can get stuck in that mode, amen, and refuse, amen, refuse to move, amen, from where we were. Now, let me just say this. When you talk about spiritual growth, spiritual growth always encompass expanding. Uh, uh, spiritual growth always encompass moving forward. Amen. So, so you got to be careful, amen, that you don't get into a position, amen, that, that you are not able, amen, to discern, amen, the purpose of conviction. A amen. Well, this is the way my grandmother did it. Uh, well, the way my grandmother did it, it was mostly based on. Amen. What those times were and the circumstances. Uh, uh, when I was a young man, amen, coming up, amen, we tried to save $20 a, 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 a week, uh, $80 a month. And, and back then, at the end of the year, that would give you a pretty good little piece of money. So we thought, amen. But in the society and time in which we live in now, <laughs> uh, uh, trying to save uh, uh, $20 a, a week, $80 a month, uh, based on the type of car you got, amen, you can't even take it in for a good tune-up, amen. So, so, so that $20 back then sufficed the need at that time. And this is where maturity and growth comes into place, amen, that you got to expand from where you are, amen. So conviction always move you from what you're accustomed to. Conviction always move you, amen, from what you say is the normality because to mature and grow in God, Amen. Means that the person must be willing to go forth. When you experience a time period of uncertainty about your convictions, consider these following questions. You may be in limbo uh, about whether it's right, about whether it's wrong, about whether God is speaking to you uh, concerning the issue of the situation. But consider this. I mean, whatever it may be you're wrestling with, ask yourself this question. Is it helpful? Now, anything that you are holding on to, anything that you have, anything that you want, that's not helpful for you has to be hurtful towards you. 
Amen. There are no middle grounds here. We like to play in betweens when we are undecided. We like the Bible call it straddling the fence. The Bible calls it lukewarm. Amen. And God does not deal with us in those facets. Amen. It's him. Amen. His hand upon us. Amen. So you got to ask yourself the question, is it helpful? If it's not helpful, it's not good for you. And, 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 and to the utmost, amen, it's harmful for you. And ask yourself another question. Does it bring me under its power? You don't want to be under the influence of anything but the spirit of God. Amen. You don't want any other power or authority to be greater in your life than the power and the authority of God's spirit. Amen. As God will lead us by his spirit through the word of God. Amen. Then ask another question. Amen. When you're trying to determine, amen, about dealing with the conviction. Does it hurt others? The Bible tells us, amen, clearly do unto others as you will have them do unto you. He didn't start naming things, amen, but he left it in a general open sense, amen, that when it comes to dealing with humanity, dealing with, amen, your brothers and your sisters, amen, those you know and those you don't know, amen, ask the question, does it hurt others? Amen. Every Christian should have a mind that you don't want to do anything that's going to hurt other individuals. And, and, and I, I, I'm just, I'm just, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm just a little uneased at times when I see how easily as some Christians will not consider, amen, the, the, the deeds of their doings. Uh, sometimes Christians will not, amen, consider, amen, the outcome of their doings. A ask yourself this question, amen, uh, if, if the thing that I'm doing, the thing that I'm involved in, does it hurt other individuals? And, and amen, if it hurts other individuals, allow that conviction, amen, to cause you to change your actions, to cause you to change your direction you're doing towards the individual that's actually being harmed. And the final question you can ask yourself is, does it glorify God? Amen. When, you, when you're wrestling with the, uh, whether it, the conviction is from God and you feel like, amen, you don't know whether it's God or not, ask yourself the question, amen, does this thing glorify God? If it does not bring glory to God, then you got to rest assured it's no aid or help to your spiritual life or your physical life, amen? So be, be, be very careful, amen, about uh, making an excuse, amen, when you deal with convictions, amen? God is very clear and God is very capable of getting our attention. I know many times as I've dealt with spiritual things and physical things that I need an answer to, I would say to God, hey amen, I'm not sure this is you. I'm not sure that this is the direction you're leading me. Lord, make it plain for me. And I receive that, amen, as God's responsibility, amen, as he being God the great and I'm the less. If God is communicating with me, he being the almighty God, the all-knowing God, amen, he knows the level in which to deal with me, amen, to get my attention and to ensure my knowledge about how he's dealing with me, amen. So if, if it doesn't glorify God, amen, if you cannot tell God, thank you for it, amen, under the boundaries of the word of God, because you don't want to thank God for, for ill found or sinful things, amen. But if you can give thanks to God, amen, and it does not even violate, amen, the principle of God's word, Amen. That thing will bring glory to God. If it don't bring glory to God, amen, follow that conviction that God is trying to, amen, lead us through in dealing with that particular situation. The next one we want to look at when it comes to balance sin with conviction and commitment is actually that commitment. I mean, the word commitment simply means, amen, a state or quality of being dedicated to a thing, a purpose or a cause. Amen. Uh, you cannot achieve the struggles of what you are trying to deal with when struggles are involved unless you have a spirit of commitment. That means that, amen, you have a resolve. Your mind is made up. You're convinced that I'm going to stick with it. Amen. Commitment, amen, is necessary. Amen. If you're going to be able to overcome, amen, all the snares and traps that the devil is going to bring your way especially when you're trying to better yourself in the Lord. So commitment, again, is the state or quality of being dedicated to a thing, to a purpose or a cause. True and purposeful commitment measures the strength of your determination. Amen. True and purposeful, purposeful commitment measures the strength of your commitment. Amen. If, if you don't have, amen, a strong sense of commitment, 
then you're not going to be determined. And, and, and determination means that, amen, you are able to face the odds. Amen. You are able to face the setbacks. You are able to face the disappointments. Amen. In this life, you're going to have disappointments. In this life, in the best of your striving, amen, to reach your goals and your destinations, amen, sometimes you're going to fall short. It's going to take commitment, amen, to pick you up and pull you up, amen, once again and say, try again, amen. And that, that brings about a spirit, amen, of determination. Godly success requires one being committed to the cause, amen. If you're going to be, amen, successful, amen, you got to have a spirit of commitment because the devil is going to try you. Anything worthwhile, anything to have, amen, any value to your spiritual life, whether it be physical, whether it be, amen, something even on spiritual nature, the devil is going to fight you in that thing, amen. So you have to have, amen, a commitment, amen. Lord, I'm going to hold fast and I'm going to see this thing through. Godly commitment is about placing your trust in God, amen. When you talk about, amen, being committed, Amen. You got to be able to place your trust in God. Here's what the Lord said in his word. He said we can do nothing without him. Amen. So if we cannot do anything without him, now uh, uh, you got to rest assured. Amen. You got to be able to trust in God. And sometimes because we can make some things happen. So you can make some things happen and that's not the will of God. But the things that you may make happen is outside of God's help per se. And now that thing does not have Amen. In a state of remaining. That's why you can you can think you have arrived and one thing shows up. Amen. To prove and show to you and to manifest. Amen. That this thing was not literally of God. And now all the work, all the effort you put into it, it now crumbles. Amen. So so godly commitment. Amen. It places us and it pushes us to the point. Amen. That now we understand the importance Amen. Of placing our trust in God. Having trust in God is not altogether knowing how God is going to do it. But listen to this. Placing your trust in God simply means that you understand, you know, you believe God is able to do it. Amen. Many times we lose the battle and we lose the victory because we're trying to figure God out. Well, if you could figure God out concerning the issue that you face, you don't need to have faith in God because you already know. Amen. So so uh, you got to place your trust in God. Amen. In other words, amen. I'm sincerely looking, amen, at the ability of God concerning the issue that I face. And in looking at the ability of God, I know that there is no failure in God. Amen. I'm convinced, amen, that God is able to do this thing. Now, there will come a time in your life as you continue to walk with God. Amen. That language will change from I know God is able to do it and it would change to I know God is going to do it. Amen. But don't try to exercise faith. Amen. That you have not utilized yet. Amen. Just simply believe. Amen. In faith, in the ability and the power of God. Amen. And that's the, that's the mode in the beginning stage of placing. Amen. Your trust in God. So godly commitment is simply about placing your trust in God. Let's look at Psalm 37. In verse number five, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I love this verse. I, I, I love this. A amen. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Whenever, amen, you're talking about godly commitment, amen, you literally have to come to a place that you take your will, you take your desire, and you place it under the confinements of the will and the desire of God. Amen. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Amen. Don't go about doing nothing in life. Amen. That's not, amen, the approval of God. Amen. Many times people will feel like, amen, I will use trickery. I will use wrong. I will use sin. I will use disobedience to get what I want. And then I'll fall back in line with God. Well, you have to understand, amen, if that's the tool and method that you're going to use. And as you may return back to the Lord, if you return back to the Lord, you cannot bring those things, amen, that you have attained, amen, under the law of sin, amen. You can't bring wrong, disobedient, sinful, amen, under the confinement of righteousness and the two, amen, stand parallel with, with each other. Amen. Always remember this, amen, based on our obedience to God, 
Amen. One will either rise or fall. Righteousness will rise. Amen. But if sin is present, amen, righteousness, amen, will fall. Amen. And the Bible tells us, amen, as a man live, amen, that's the way you're going to die. That's the way you're going to face, amen, your final judgment. So he tells us in Psalm 37 and 5, amen, commit thy way to the Lord. Amen. Your desire, amen, your wants, your needs, place them, amen, under the will and the commandments of God's holy word. Trust also in him. Amen. Trust means that in many cases you don't have the answer. Amen. You don't need trust when you got it. I'm trusting God for five dollars and it's in your hand. Uh, 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 you don't need trust. Then all you need to do is look in your hand and, and deal with what's in your hand. Trust is based on the fact of dealing with the unknown. Amen. The unrevealed. Amen. The unseen. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Amen. And he shall bring it to pass. Shall means that, there, that in many cases there's a time period. And we don't know time periods, amen, unless God gives us a specific time period. But in most cases, we're dealing with trials and issues, amen. We don't know this, how long that season will be. But that's the key word. It's only a season, amen. It's not the entire whole, amen, of your seasons. It's only one identity out of the seasons, amen. And he said, he shall, he shall, amen, bring it to pass. When God says he shall do something, it does not matter what happens in your life. It does not matter what the circumstances are. It does not matter what arise that you do not expect. When God say he shall, everything that's in the pathway of that thing coming to fruition must be destroyed or moved out of the way. Amen. Commitment also requires making sacrifices and giving of oneself wholeheartedly to the service of the Lord. Amen. If you're going to really talk about and then exercise the law of commitment, amen, you have to be able to be a person that understand that there are going to be sacrifices. Amen. There are going to be sacrifices throughout your entire life. Amen. Where you have to deal with things. Sacrifice many times involves, amen, the Christian choosing one between the other. Amen. And sometime in choosing the things that you are choosing from, may not necessarily be sinful, but also as you may choose, you have to determine, even though it's not sinful, is it helpful in what I'm trying, amen, to acquire in the level I'm trying to reach in God, amen. So commitment again requires sacrifices and giving of oneself wholeheartedly to the service of the Lord, amen. Wholeheartedly means that you do it, amen, with a spirit towards God, amen. Many times, amen, Christians have done things just simply Amen. Out of the obedience to the scripture, nothing wrong with that. But then again, amen, uh, uh, you have not altogether matured, amen, beyond obedience to the scripture. Amen. In other words, many will say, amen, I love God because, and because many times attached, amen, to what God did for them. But a greater maturity in God is you love God because he's God. Amen. When God loved us, amen, he did not attach anything to the fact of us having done anything for him. The Bible said God so loved the world that he gave. That so love means that, amen, on God's own motivation, amen, on God's own inclination, amen, he made a decision, amen, to love us above all else, amen. So whenever you uh, look into your life and you deal, amen, with commitment, amen, you have to be committed wholeheartedly, amen. This is not just something I'm doing out of obedience. Amen. This is who I have become. This is a part of my nature. This is a part of my desire. Amen. Listen, if you will, in closing, the task of overcoming. Well, I, I'll tell you before we close, let's look at St. Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 24. Let's look at Matthew 16 and 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So again, commitment requires, amen, making a sacrifice. Amen. You, you, you got to be able to deny yourself. Amen. Deny means uh, uh, in some cases not necessarily wrong what you're dealing with. But as you evaluate it, it's not adding to, <laughs> amen, what you're trying to accomplish. Amen. So you got to look at then again, it can be things that are wrong in your life. Amen. And, and you so desire it. <laughs> amen. But you got to deny yourself. Amen. When you're on a diet, amen, and you're trying to reach, amen, a certain, amen, uh, number of weight, 
amen, you view what that number is and then you chart out amen, the method whereby, amen, you're going to follow to, to reach that goal. And now here comes people out of the woodworks that never came up before, amen, just pushing food everywhere, amen. And, you, and nothing wrong with them. They're doing what they do out of good deed. But now you have to look at that food and, and nothing wrong with the food, amen, nothing wrong with the desire. Amen. Your desire is to have it. But now you got to choose to deny yourself because you have another you have another goal. You have another destination in mind. And even though they're doing what they're doing out of kindness and for your betterment. Amen. You look at the, the fullness of what you're trying to reach. Amen. So now you have to choose Amen, to deny yourself. He said, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. In conclusion, the task of overcoming the sin nature is a lifelong mission. Amen. You will not accomplish this mission. Amen. In five years, 10 years, 20 years. Amen. When you talk about overcoming the sin nature, amen, it's a mission that we're going to be on until the Lord calls us to our eternal rest. The daily practice of surrendering to the will of God must be a constant focus if we are to be successful. Amen. If we are going to, amen, fall under the, uh, allowing ourselves to be in surrender to God's will and his purpose, it has to be a daily practice. Amen. It must be a constant focus. You cannot do it for a month or two. You cannot do it for two weeks. You cannot do it just for a year. Amen. And then lose sight. Amen. On what you're trying to attain in the Lord. As a Christian, ask God to allow the works of godly conviction and commitment to have its proper works in your life. Amen. Ask God. Amen. As you may pray. Amen. In your different times of prayer. Amen. To allow conviction and to allow commitment. Amen. To have its complete and perfect works in your life. Amen. To bring you to the status of a better Christian that you may better serve him. So I pray today that this lesson is proven to be a blessing to your spiritual life, to your walk and to your better incitement of what God requires of us. And that you may put these things in practice. Amen. That you will readily see. Amen. The fruit thereof. You continue to pray for this nation. Amen. Pray for this ministry, this work. Amen. As we are undertaking, amen, great insights, amen, to better, amen, ourselves in a better position to be able to serve the Lord, to serve this community, and to be a better example for the people of God. So you pray, you pray for us. As time may go, we'll share, amen, the insight of some of these endeavors that we're undertaking. And I just want to say, as we close the day, we thank God for all things. I want to thank God for being a prayer answering God. He is just that, amen. If God answered my prayers, Amen. I want to share with you today. Amen. God will certainly answer your prayers. Amen. I remember times as I closed, I sat in many questions as I saw in the lives of other believers. Amen. God just answering their prayers. Amen. And I asked God, I said, Lord, if you'll do it for them, how about me? Amen. So I, that's why I made that statement. Amen. If he answer my prayers. Amen. If he answer their prayers. Amen. And he has done that. Then rest assured. God will answer your prayers. You'll be blessed. May the favor and grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest upon you until we meet again.